I was just working on the uh, the UI for my upcoming game Hex God here, and specifically up in this top corner, I was working on this little control section, and I realized that there are a bunch of UI nodes. There's about six of them that I use all over the place, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how I did that for Hexagod. The demo is currently playable over on Steam. It's super fun to play. And more than anything, I was able to make a UI that I'm super proud of and like that feels responsive. It feels juicy. It, it's, it is minimalistic. Like there's these little tool tips whenever you hover over different things like that. And I just want to talk about the general approach and kind of give you enough information so that you can go be dangerous with the Godot control system and go start building better UIs for yourself. So let's get right into it. To begin with, let me give you a lay of the land of what I currently have set up here. And this is six components. So at the very top here, we have a marching container, which is just gonna allow me to actually position this inside of my scene with a little bit of margins around it. You could adjust these as, as you want. Down here in the theme overrides for that margin container component here, we have the constants and this, you can go ahead and adjust here and see then that it kind of pushes stuff around. So this is my way of giving stuff spacing on the screen. I use margin containers all the time. You'll see a second one here in a hot second. The next is gonna be a panel container, and this is what gives it this little bit of a look with a, a quick little styling here. So if you click on a panel container and you go down into style, I have the style box flat in here, and you can see the background color is set to the background color. You can change it to whatever you wanna do. I have a border set to that kind of light tan color here. And then you have the border width, which you can change and you'll add a border so you can adjust it as you wanted to and kind of mess around with these different uh, these different styles. I always, almost all the time, use a style box flat in here and then adjust accordingly. Inside of that, I have another margin container. Yes, another margin container. And that is gonna be to give everything inside of this panel container a little bit of breathing room. So if we turned off all of these margins here, you can see it kind of looks a little squishy, especially this P over here looks a little bit close. So if I just control Z to undo all that stuff, you can see there's a nice little bit of uh, margin container in there as well. Now we get into the meat and potatoes of the actual setup. And this is what I do almost all the time with my UIs is I have a VBox container with a bunch of stuff on the inside. And for those who don't know, there's two really great containers here. We have um, the VBox container, and that is going to give you uh, columns. So you have the ability to have a bunch of VBox in a row if you had an HBox on the outside. And then the VBox on the inside is gonna give you spacing for all your individual units down the row. So if you had an HBox on the very outside here, we'll call the orange one the HBox, that's gonna do horizontal stuff. So you got HBox and VBox. VBox position stuff vertically and uh, HBox position stuff horizontally. So a lot of the times I'll either have an HBox as the parent with a bunch of VBoxes in, in a row to have a, a kind of a, a horizontal set and then a vertical set, or I'll do the opposite and go with uh, V box on the outside and then have a bunch of H boxes on the inside. And then inside of those, you have your components. Hey there, before we get back in the project, I wanted to quickly say that I don't take sponsorships on this channel. I wanna be a game developer who makes YouTube videos for you that shares my progress as a game developer. And I don't wanna be a YouTuber who makes games, which I think is an important distinction. And if you wanna support my channel even further, you can go ahead and buy my games. Hexagod is currently in the demo phase and it's gonna be in the October Next Fest, hopefully if not the February Next Fest. And the other game you could check out, which is actually purchasable right now, is called uh, Chess Survivors, if I can remember the name of my own game. And it is a incredibly fun game that whenever I go back and play it, I'm incredibly proud of the results. So check out either or both of those games. There'll be links below. I appreciate it. Now let's get back into the tutorialization of how I like to use UI nodes. I have a V box on the outside and then underneath all of these, I have a bunch of H boxes. So I have this uh, label here, which is gonna be the actual label. I just put in the words control there. That's another great one is label. That just so shows you text all over the place. And then after that, I have a bunch of H boxes, which then have their individual contents inside of them. So if we dive in a little bit further, um, the, the V box here has a separation of negative five. That's just to, to scrunch things up. If you wanted to space things out and give stuff a little bit more space, you could. I went with negative five just to kind of tighten it up a little bit. It isn't, um, it's still readable and it kind of makes everything look a little bit more compact, which is super nice. Um, the other thing you, I will oftentimes do in the V box is gonna be changing the alignment. So if you wanted to say, 
aligned to beginning. That's going to be in a V box situation. Beginning means top, center means the middle, and end means the bottom of the V box. Um, if we flip into the H box, that has that also has an alignment, but that is talking about the horizontal. So end is going to be, um, you know, justify everything to the end. That is the right hand side here. Or we can go beginning, and that moves everything to be in the beginning. In this situation, I thought it would look really nice if everything was the end, especially because in my head, in my main scene over here, uh, let's see if I can show it really quickly here. In my main scene, if I hide this shop here, the controls are gonna be on the top right corner, and that's where I want everything to be in the top, so the beginning of the V-Box, and then justified to the right with the uh, with the end for the horizontal one there. Um, the Everything else in the H-Box is, is set to be whatever it is. Then I have inside of there, I have a label, which I put the text in there to say select things, gives me that text, and then I simply grab the icon, which I got from Kenny Assets here. This, this input prompts is wonderful. There'll be a link below. Kenny Assets are huge. He's got some tools you can purchase, but otherwise he has a lot of really great free assets and you can um, donate to support Kenny. It's been the backbone of a lot of my projects. It's just using some of his great assets here. So I grabbed a bunch of those, threw them into my um, threw them into my project here, and just slapped them into this texture here. And I didn't change expanding or stretching because the size of the actual texture here worked perfectly fine. But you can mess around with these. Um, I will be honest with you. I guess and check. If I need to change the scaling of these things to be something different, fit with proportional, I just I keep I just keep changing it until it looks just about right and. That's just it. So if you wanna if you wanna learn how something works, just, just mess around with it. Click around, change the settings, see what happens. You can always click this little uh, icon here to revert it back. So if you went to here and you're like, what was the default? I can't remember. Clicking these little arrows here will just revert it back to whatever it was, and you can keep going forward. So just play around with those settings enough so that it looks it looks about right. And maybe you, you'll find yourself down a rabbit hole of trying to get it to look just pixel perfect. And in that moment, back out. It's good enough for now, and you can keep moving on in your project. Don't waste five hours getting to look just perfect. Just make it work, make it good enough for now, and you can always come back and keep refining as that project continues and continues and continues. Um, so what I wanted to do here is do a real quick version of this. So I, I then basically just copied down these H boxes, and here I have the ability to, uh, you can zoom the camera. And so I wanted to create a brand new one. So I just copy and duplicate this H box down here. I can delete some of the textures I don't really care about. And then in the label here, let me go ahead and grab the, the text I want, which is gonna be called zoom camera. Go into zoom camera. Perfect. I'll delete the uh, the space in there so it's nice and tight. And then to zoom camera, if I go up and find the actual uh, mouse wheel, it's right here. I can just take it over to this texture and I can either drag it into texture or I believe I can just also slap it right there. Yep. And it'll grab itself correctly. Um, something you might want to make sure you do is when before you do that, if you go here and click make unique, you can make sure that it is a unique um, copy of it. Because if you don't right click and come down and click make unique, it's going to change all of the instances of that, which could be a good thing. All the instances within this scene to be that different texture. So in this sort of situation, I wanna make sure that this is the middle mouse wheel and the rest of this is gonna be the correct one accordingly. Um, what else is interesting here? Um, on these on these labels, something I've found pretty useful here is being able to center these. Uh, right, left, center, fill, in this situation, the expand of the label here is not set to uh, to grow at all. So instead, you can go down and find the layout here, and then we can go to container sizing, and it will fill, but it will not expand. So now if we click expand, it'll expand it all the way out. So in this situation, say I wanted this zoom label, I wanna make sure it justifies to the left. You can change the horizontal alignment to justify to the left. And then in this situation, it would be able to be justified left, or maybe you wanna put it in the center, or whatever you wanna be able to do. But if you go around messing around with your different container sizings, that'll help out a lot. Now, one piece of warning is sometimes, depending on what the parent node is, you might not be able to set these container sizings because certain parent nodes within Godot will say, hey, you cannot change your sizing. The sizing is set based off the parent. In those situations, maybe change the parent node, mess around with it, see if there's something different you can be doing so you can make sure you get your um, 
the alignment as you're expecting it to be. So in this situation, I do not want it to fill and I do not want it to be to be center left. Again, you can click those little those little arrows to reset things, which is super useful. Um, another really cool thing I found myself using quite a bit is going to be this uppercase one. So if you have a bunch of text in here that you put in and you want to make sure it's uppercase all the time, you can click this simple checkbox and it'll make it uppercase all the time for you. I love the margin containers, the panel containers, the V box and H box. And like, don't let anybody make you feel bad if your UI looks like a train wreck. Um, there's some of my, my, my UI nodes in here. If you look on this left-hand side, like it's just full, it's full, full, full of notes and that's completely acceptable remember it just has to work just barely and you can always go back and refactor and change things and turn different scenes into sub scenes and, and go from there and slowly improve it over time it doesn't have to be something that works perfectly like it doesn't have to be the perfect vision of what you want to have right away it can be something that over time slowly becomes better and better and better and look at that i already have an error because uh, i'm missing a component i need and that's just that's a perfect encapsulation of the game just has to work. And so I'm going to go fix this bug and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if you have any tutorials you want me to do in the future. Um, again, I don't like tutorials. I like to kind of show my approach to things and give you uh, enough information to, to go and start exploring Godot and game development yourself. You're better at this than you think. Be patient, be kind with yourself. And until next time, I've been Aramis. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.